Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is January 26, 2021. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now today, on BoxingScene.com, a great site, they have an article in which Leonard Ellerby, a very important person with Mayweather Promotions, makes the claim that the biggest possible fight in boxing right now is Gervonta Tank Davis, unbeaten, versus Ryan Garcia, unbeaten. Now, as I've been saying for years here online, it's my heartfelt belief that there are two groups in boxing. There's the heavyweight champ, and then there's everyone else. Right, you can go back through history. People might not remember a single fighter from the 1930s, except Joe Lewis. Go back before that, 1908, 1909. You might not know a single fighter from the era, except Jack Johnson. The heavyweight champion casts a long shadow. All things being equal, when there's a great heavyweight fight on the horizon, it eclipses everything else in the sport. The rest of the room is dark. That heavyweight fight is going to soak up all the sun. That's the case now. You know, Leonard Ellaby might know his stuff. He doesn't know what a great fight is. You have a fight coming up right now that deserves your attention, right? Here in the United States, I can tell you, there could be an impeachment trial going on in the United States Congress, right? I'd have to find out about that after the event, after I've watched this fight. And it's a fight being put together between one of the most important figures in all all of sports. I believe history is going to look back at this guy and they're going to say, what were they thinking at the time? This should be obvious. In 2015, Ring Magazine named as the fighter of the year, the lineal heavyweight champion, the man who had just beaten Vladimir Klitschko, a guy who'd been heavyweight champ for years, right? That person was Tyson Fury, right? He's the 2015 ring fighter of the year. Then he falls on hard times. He's suspended. He has mental health and drug issues, right? There are even claims of PED use. Think about it. He comes back, he's viewed as a joke. The whole time he's unbeaten. People start questioning whether in fact he's the lineal because so much time passed between when he fell out of the sport, when he gained a lot of weight, when he wasn't allowed to fight, and when he came back, that he was an underdog against Deontay Wilder. Let's remember that fight. Wilder goes into the fight, the first fight, unbeaten with one of history's biggest KO percentages. Think about that. Tyson Fury had to cross the Atlantic, had to travel to the United States to fight Deontay Wilder. Fury was viewed as a joke. Not a lineal, not an unbeaten fighter. He was viewed as a joke, an amusement park attraction. Well, they call that fight a draw, and you and I know it wasn't a draw. Giving the judges the benefit of the doubt, 
okay, I'll concede. The 12th round is a disaster for Fury. Disaster. Well, he gets to draw. Still unbeaten. They have the rematch. Right? Fury sharpens his skills with interim fights. Let's remember, he only had two fights on the comeback. There were more years between when Fury last fought before the comeback and the number of fights he had after the comeback before he got to Deontay Wilder. So they have the rematch. Tyson Fury decides to come on his front foot. This is the guy with the legs. This is the dancer. This is like watching Ali stalk someone. What you ended up with is one of the best fights in heavyweight history. For me, the high watermark. The champion who is in his prime has it all working. Shows you what's possible in the sport. That fight is Ali against Cleveland Williams. That's the best Ali, in my opinion, hands down. He's too fast for Cleveland Williams. He's able to drop his hands. Williams was the KO puncher. He drops Williams. He stops that fight early. Well, let's just say Tyson Fury on his front foot giving Deontay Wilder his first loss, stalking Wilder, beating up Wilder, perhaps even biting Wilder. Drops Wilder at one point off a body shot. As you looked at the fight, you understood it was history. You understood the guys had different ceilings. One guy was a puncher. The other guy was a boxer puncher. Complete. Well, of course, Ring Magazine recently named Tyson Fury the 2020 Fighter of the Year. The public still doubts him. Folks, he's won two Ring Fighter of the Years five years apart. A mental breakdown apart. A huge weight gain apart. A suspension apart. The only guy who's in a position to relate to Tyson Fury saga is Ali, who of course got suspended while he was unbeaten heavyweight champion. So of course they're talking about this fighter, fighting Anthony Joshua. Now I know I've been critical of Joshua here online. But let's be clear who he is. He's the Olympic gold medalist. He's a guy, think of the top fighters right now. We were astonished by the Prevetkin Dylan White fight. Understand, Anthony Joshua has already beaten both men. Right, think about it. Joseph Parker was an unbeaten champion when he faced Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua has already beaten him. Right? An argument can be made that the biggest fight Tyson Fury had in his career was his fight against then reigning champion Vladimir Klitschko. Anthony Joshua has beaten him in a fight that was, quite frankly, epic. Anthony Joshua is coming back. He has his own big comeback. He's coming back from one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight history. Right? He got stopped by Andy Ruiz. So think about this. This is kind of like a reverse Fury-Deontay Wilder situation. Right? Fury goes hunting for Wilder in that rematch after dancing the first fight. Well, in the Anthony Joshua-Andy Ruiz rematch, 
It's Joshua who decides he's going to be dancing after having been flat-footed the first fight. He beats Andy Ruiz. So, Joshua holds a lot of the belts. Fury is still unbeaten. He's a two-time ring magazine fighter of the year. He's not only the lineal, he's picked up the WBC, a very highly regarded belt. Now, if current negotiations work out, and I understand they're talking to Usyk, Usyk might fight Joe Joyce, who, of course, is picking Fury to beat Joshua, right? And, of course, <laughs> has sparred with Tyson Fury extensively, just food for thought. Right, this fight may well be for the undisputed heavyweight championship. Understand how rare that is at heavyweight. The last one was named Lennox Lewis. Right, so history somehow has come together here. You know, Leonard Ellaby's world is not mine. For me, it's clear, I don't care who else is fighting that day. Let's say Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia is on one channel, right? Some impeachment trial. Lord knows the United States seems to be having a few of them of late. Some impeachment trial is on another channel, right? Canelo, huge box office king, is on another channel. I'm not watching any of that. If it takes place the same time as this fight, right? It's January of 2021, we already know the biggest fight of 2021. It's this fight. Huge. Absolutely huge. Let me just say this too. You know, I've long said that Tyson Fury, along with Vitaly Klitschko, to me, are the two dominant fighters of the post-Lennox Lewis era in the heavyweight division. Right now, we've had some very impressive records, some very impressive performances happen. Right? Deontay Wilder has a great point when he says, hey, I've only lost once. Tyson Fury's record was spotless until I got a draw against him. I was heavyweight champ for five years. I was unbeaten during that run. I understand Anthony Joshua has a great resume. He's fought real opponents. These guys are among the top contenders today. White, Parker, Povetkin, they're among the top contenders in boxing, folks. And Anthony Joshua is still standing. Right, but from where I sit, if I'm just going to keep it as real as I can, right, there's a difference in my eyes between very, very good and great, right? Just understand, between these two men, Fury and Joshua, only one of them, only one of them can decide, okay, I'm going to fight this fight left-handed and be able to do so outside left-handed or inside left-handed. Only one of these guys can say, you know what? I'm going to get up on my toes and I'm going to dance for 12 rounds against an opponent who moves better than Andy Ruiz. And that's Tyson Fury. Only one of these guys, before he hurts an opponent, and say, okay, that's it. I'm going to come inside. Right? This this opponent's 100%. I'm going to come inside on Derek Chisora. I'm going to come inside on Steve Cunningham. I'm going to lean on the guy. I'm going to shorten my punches. And I'm going to take this guy out while he's 100%. Or I'm going to batter this guy at his own game. And that's Tyson Fury. So don't get me wrong. Results matter. Right? If Anthony Joshua beats Tyson Fury, 
He's the heavyweight champ in my eyes, right? Results matter. Whoever I think in the abstract is better. Right? I'll go with the knockout. I'll go with the winner. Right? But if I'm right about this fight, you're going to see a great fighter against a very good fighter. As Joe Joyce puts it, Anthony Joshua is concerned about the punches coming back. Right? Tyson Fury's an Ali type. He's already thought about the punches coming back when he picks the entry point, when he sets up his angle. I thought it was interesting. In the Wilder fight, the ref makes a decision. The ref actually allows Tyson Fury to extend his arms without throwing punches. Fury, look at the tape, is using that right hand as just a range finder to make sure he's out of the reach of Deontay Wilder, to make sure Wilder can't land that A-plus Wilder straight right hand. Right? That's a different thought process. Put it this way. I thought Joshua was going to have a very challenging time with Kubrat Pulev. Joshua proved me wrong. Joshua looked much better in that fight than I thought. Much better. But it was interesting. Because when Joshua knocks down Pulev early... You just thought, okay, this fight's over, right? Pulev's in his late 30s. Pulev went down hard. That wasn't a slip. He got slugged, right? Joshua, younger, stronger, was having the better go of it. So you thought, okay, well, you know, is Pulev going to survive this round? Then you started asking yourself a different question as the fight progressed, it wasn't, is Pulev going to survive this round? It was, is Pulev going to win this round? Right? Joshua was the craftsman who didn't trust his tools. Right? Joshua understood. If I overextend myself here after this knockdown, this could be like my fight against Vladimir Klitschko, where I drop the guy, then I end up getting dropped. Right? There was hesitation. Now contrast that with Tyson Fury, who's been dropped in fights. Fury gets off the canvas. He's livid. He trusts his tools. He knows his tools. Worse yet, he knows his tools are better than the other guy's tools. So when Fury gets off the canvas, right? Twelfth round. Twelfth round of the first fight against Deontay Wilder. Fury gets back to winning the round. I'm not saying he won the round, right? He got drilled, he's down, gets up at the count of nine. When he gets dropped by Steve Cunningham, he gets back up, he's in the fight, right? It's a difference. Fury's not there to give away rounds. He trusts himself more then Anthony Joshua trusts himself, right? To me, this is a different level. Let me also say, too, and I know people have been critical of me, and hey, I'll take it. I'm a grown-up. But in some of these fights, the White fight, Dylan White is still among us. Reporters can talk to him. I thought the first round was going extremely well for White. Then it looked like he couldn't throw his jab. After the fight, I heard he hurt his shoulder in the fight. Right? This is the White fight against Joshua. I thought the Parker fight against Joshua had an unfortunate referee, in my opinion. Right? You see Parker trying to get inside on Joshua. Correct me if I'm wrong. You usually do in the comment section of my videos. But I thought the referee wouldn't let these guys fight inside. I thought Joshua was excessively tentative in that fight. Joshua was afraid to throw his right hand. Wasn't he? 
That's the first fight in Joshua's career to go the distance. And keep in mind, that fight was in Joshua's backyard. Let's just say, huge fight in Joshua's backyard. Right? The ref stops the fighters from fighting inside. Let's just say Joshua doesn't push the issue. Let's just say Joshua doesn't go for the KO. That fight doesn't have an exclamation point at the end of the sentence. Then we get to the Prevetkin fight. I know, I know, I know the people here on YouTube disagree with me. I thought Prevetkin was winning that fight. I thought Prevetkin showed you foot speed that Joshua was afraid to match. Right? The secret with Joshua, and I call him big and clunky, but understand, he can be fast. He can move. You notice the movement when he hurts a guy. Right? The Dominique Brazil fight, for example, that had a ridiculously low over-under. Right? I came here online. I said, look, Joshua's too tentative. Take the over. The over hit, even though Joshua won the fight. And after that fight, I got heat from people saying, oh, you're downplaying Anthony Joshua. No, I'm betting on angles in fights. But understand, in that fight, and I encourage people to look at the film, in that Joshua Dominique Brazil fight, Joshua's tentative. Then he badly hurts Dominique Brazil. Then you notice the movement. Joshua can move, but he only decides to move after he's hurt you, right? That's not a lack of ability. That's a lack of confidence because Joshua understands that when the bullets start flying, first Andy Ruiz fight, when a guy is actually there firing back and testing him. Saying, player, go ahead and empty the gun. I'm here in the pocket for a gunfight. Joshua knows his defense degrades. You cannot be a great fighter if in the biggest moments of the fight you forget about defense on an ongoing basis, right? Joshua doesn't want to open up on guys. If he does, he'll end up on his back, as in the first Klitschko fight. What I want people to do, too, is to rewind that fight. If you're looking at Joshua on the canvas in that fight, look at the prior round when Klitschko hits the canvas. Now, Klitschko, who used to have chin problems, let's remember the Corey Sanders fight. Let's remember the Lehman Brewster first fight. Klitschko used to have chin problems. Sam Peter drops Vladimir Klitschko multiple times in a fight. Well, understand... When Klitschko gets dropped, and it's a fight where Joshua is left hook heavy. I want people to revisit that. He's left hook heavy. The left hook enables you to protect yourself while you're throwing shots. You can have a hand up like this, right? So Joshua's left hook heavy in that round. He drops Klitschko. Klitschko gets off the canvas. And then goes after Joshua. Let's look at the round. But for the knockdown. Vladimir Klitschko wins that round. Right? I'm just telling you. If Vladimir Klitschko gets dropped by Tyson Fury. It didn't happen when they fought. But had he gotten dropped by Tyson Fury. The way Deontay Wilder did in the rematch. Vladimir Klitschko would be a fool to rush back in on Tyson Fury, right? He would have found a guy prepared to end the fight, a guy 
quite frankly, with better stamina. Better stamina. More confidence than Anthony Joshua. So that's how I see this fight. I know I'm going to hear from all of you should Joshua win this fight. But let's be clear here. Ryan Garcia is popular in the sport right now. He just doesn't have the resume these guys have. It's not happening. He hasn't fought in front of the crowds that Anthony Joshua has fought in front of. He's not a two-time Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. Like Tyson Fury is. And let's face it. He doesn't fight in the sports glamour division like these two guys do. Right? I'm just telling you, a lot of people remember boxing in the 1970s by the phrase, Fraser Ali Foreman. Right? There were a lot of great fighters in the 70s. Carlos Monzon, one of the great fighters in middleweight history is out of the 70s. Roberto Duran had a ridiculous run in the 1970s. Right? You remember the era based on Smoking Joe, Ali, and Big George Foreman. That's the power of the heavyweight division. The 1980s, my goodness, had a bunch of great fighters. If I say, you know, in my opinion, Mike Tyson was the biggest fighter of the 1980s, Everyone's going to know who he was. Everyone. Right? So let's not kid ourselves. Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia, that's a good fight. I'd take Tank Davis in that fight, but that's a good fight. Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua. Whether or not it's for the undisputed heavyweight title. Just the fact that a bunch of heavyweight titles would be in the mix. Make this the must-see. Five years from now, if you're talking to people and you're in a pub having a Guinness, and you say, hey, I saw one fight. <laughs> I saw one fight in 2021. Trust me, the people next to you are not going to say, oh, was that the Tank David, the, the Tank Davis Ryan Garcia fight. No one's going to say that. They're going to know already. They'll say, oh, so you saw Fury Joshua. That's the fight. I'm taking Tyson Fury. You know, I view this as a great heavyweight against a very good heavyweight. Right? Tyson Fury, to me, is a Lennox Lewis, Larry Holmes level heavyweight. Right? And I think the world of Larry. Right? Ali, level heavyweight. Right? I feel Anthony Joshua, who could prove me wrong, is a very good heavyweight in the moment. A Deontay Wilder heavyweight. That's how I see it. I've made a bunch of videos on this fight. Let me hear from you. Um, I can't wait for this fight. I wouldn't blame. Usyk, if he says, hell no, I'm not stepping aside, I'm in my 30s. Right? Eddie Hearn, my promoter, supposedly, <laughs> hooked me up. Right? Hook a fighter up here. I wouldn't blame Usyk if he doesn't step aside. Understand, Usyk is historical as well. But at Cruiser, right? He has to prove himself in heavy. These guys already have. This is a big fight that's going to define careers. Understand, if Fury is as good as I think he is, there's a chance off this fight that he wins his third Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. And rather than just say, Dwyer, you're a Joshua hater, tell us how Joshua wins the fight. Tell us what Joshua does better than Tyson Fury. Tell us what would have happened had Joshua fought Deontay Wilder. I look forward to your comments.